أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسلام الدين أما بعد. So we have verses 169 to 175 today from Surah Al Imran and these verses um, were revealed around time of the Battle of Uhud as the uh, people the Shuhada that were martyred. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is telling us the blessing and the gift, the hibah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who um, pass away in the battlefield. And one thing that needs to be informed to us before we go into this ayah is the sanctity of life, the value of life is humongous in front of Allah SWT. There are numerous ayat in the Quran that uh, tell us very, very highly about the value of life itself. Uh, you know, giving you know, in the path of Allah SWT is a very noble act and it's a very highly thing. For example, Allah SWT has forbidden people killing one another. And Allah SWT has said that in Surah Ma'idah, that if you kill one person as if you kill all of humanity and if you save one person it's as if you save all of humanity in the hajjatul wada in the favor of the rasulullah also uh, reminded the muslims the sanctity of life the value of a human being and not to uh, commit murder and killing and battles whatnot um, for each other's personal desires and personal agenda and that up <clears throat> as the Arabs were famous in terms of terms of tribal culture to have many battles on petty issues. When Islam came, Islam said that only in the path of Allah there is a higher cause, a higher noble um, order for which a person uh, sets out. So now those people who set out in the path of Allah and defend the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so they are going for a very noble deed they're not going for war or battle or murdering but yes they're going for certainly that has to be put into context in terms of the 13 years that Rasulullah spent in Mecca in uh, a non-violent uh, way of Dawa, where people were torturing him and his followers, and he did not retaliate, did not seek revenge. But once the order from Allah came that they can pick up arms to defend themselves against the people who were desiring to annihilate. Them. So then Allah SWT had gave permission, and that is where the battles took place. So we know the Battle of Badr was first, and then the Battle of Uhud. Here in this ayah, the first one, Allah is telling us, وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ Notice how Allah Taala used the word قُتِلُوا. So قِتَال or قَتَلَ يَقْتُلُوا means to kill. So those who have been killed, قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ In the path of Allah. Allah Taala is uplifting the morale and boosting the uh, morale of the believers who had lost their loved ones in the battle. And that is why um, it is mentioned in a hadith um, how uh, this whole issue came into being uh, in terms of that there was uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Jabir, he was sad uh, because he had lost his father. Uh, Sorry, Jabir ibn Abdullah had lost his father and he was sad and so he came to Rasulullah and uh, Rasulullah asked him, why are you sad? He said, Ya Rasulullah, I lost my father in Uhud. So Allah, uh, Rasulullah informed him that Allah's mother has just informed me that your father is in a much, much better place. And that's when he recited this ayat. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ أَمْوَاتَ بَلْ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ Do not think or don't even, you know, 
consider or, or, or feel that the people who have been uh, perished in the battlefield um, are dead. Rather, they are alive. Now, this is a very important and intriguing concept when the people uh, on earth do not this there's no rule but Allah is saying they're alive see the reality in the realm of life is defined by who Allah SWT. see Allah defined our worldly life in such a way where body and soul is joined together conjoined and hence we feel alive in the current state that we're alive the soul has to be in the body to be alive if the soul departs the body we say the person is the person has transferred from the body the the domain or the realm that allah is defining in this area about these group of people is in, in a different concept something that the people on earth cannot comprehend because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinite. This is one thing we have to understand as believers. We are finite. We are limited. But in our sight, we're... And that is why we cannot comprehend how are these people alive. Because if they're alive, they... So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they're alive with their Lord and the Rabbihim. They are with their Lord uh, being, uh, you know, giving risk. And that is why when uh, uh, when Rasulullah said to Jabir, Mali Araka You know, why do I see you so depressed and sad? He said, Istushida Abi Wataraka Ayalan wa alayhi dain that my father Abdullah became martyred and he left behind uh, the family and I have a loan upon me. So Jabir ibn Abdullah is thinking about worldly matters. You know, I have a family to feed, my dad is gone, uh, I have a loan, I have to take care of that. While he's in this predicament and thinking, uh, Rasulullah said to him, Shall I not inform you, O Jabir, what happened to your father in this context? Qultu bala ya Rasulullah sallam. Jabir says that I said, of course, Ya Rasulullah, yes, please do inform me. Faqala Rasulullah sallam. So Rasulullah said, Inna Allah ahya abaka wa kalmu kafahim. That, O Jabir, this is a very profound hadith about how this ayah was revealed to Prophet Muhammad. So Rasulullah tells Jabir that your Lord, our Lord Allah SWT, he has made your father Abdullah uh, alive and he has spoken to him, meaning Allah has spoken to your father or Jabir, which is Abdullah. And so Allah said to your father, uh, and, and, and then the Rasulullah goes on to say, وَمَا كَلَّمَ أَحَدًا قَدْ إِلَّا مِنْ حِجَابٍ And Allah does not talk to anyone except behind the curtain. فَقَالَ لَهُ يَا عَبْدُ اللَّهِ تَمَنْ O slave of Allah, desire, wish, tamann. What is your desire? أَعْتَكْ I shall give you. So Jabir's father, Abdullah, says, قَالَ يَا رَبْ أَسْأَلُكَ أَنْ تَرَدْنِي إِلَى الدُّنْيَا فَأَقْتُلْ فِيكَ سَانِيَا فَقَالَ الرَّبْ تَبَارَكْ وَتَعَالَى إِنَّهُ قَدْ سَبَقَ مِنِّي أَنَّهُ إِلَيْهِ لَا يَرْجِعُ You know what the father of Jabir ibn Abdullah said to Allah SWT? Abdullah said to Allah SWT, that, Oh Allah, return me back to the world. Return me back to this dunya so that I fight again in your path. In your way. So Allah SWT said to Abdullah, the father of Jabir, that it has been already <clears throat> written, O oh, oh Abdullah, that I, Allah, do not return anyone back to this world.
we do not re-enter this realm, this world again. So this is also mentioned in the Quran, Surah Mu'minun, Surah 23. You may have read that ayah, verse 99, where the where a person will say at the time of death, "Laali, qala Rabbi rjoon, laali amalu salihan." You know, the person will say at the time of death, each person will say to Allah, "Qala Rabbi rjoon, O Allah, return me back to this dunya, laali amalu salihan fi ma tarak, so that I may do righteous good deed in what I have left behind." And Allah says in verse number 100, No, it is just a word that the person is saying, meaning they don't really mean it. So that concept is mentioned already there in Surah Mu'minun. Amazing thing in this, the Rasulullah is telling Jabir ibn Abdullah that, Oh Jabir, don't be sad, don't be depressed. Your Lord has spoken to your father Abdullah and he said, uh, your Lord has said, or our Lord, Allah has said to your father that wish and desire what you want. And so your father asked Allah that send me back to this dunya one more time. So that why? To accumulate wealth? Again in your path. This just goes to say that the people who become shaheed, when they see their result and dividend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they just have only one more desire to continue to uh, to fight in the path of Allah SWT. So Allah said to the father of Jabir Abdullah over there, it is already written that no one can be sent back. So that wish of yours cannot be granted, O Abdullah. Uh, so therefore, uh, 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 Allah said, فَقَالَ يَا رَبْ So, Abdullah said to Allah SWT, meaning the father, the father of Jabir, Abdullah said that, oh Allah, then inform the people that I've left behind, meaning my son, my family, my relatives, inform them about me, Ya Allah. So Allah revealed this ayah to Muhammad SAW on earth at that time. And then Muhammad recited that to the Sahaba, especially Jabir, the son of the Shaheed Abdullah. And Allah is saying, informing all of us through the Prophet Muhammad in this area, that do not you dare ever think the people who have been killed in the battlefield in the path of Allah, that they are dead. They're alive. They're alive in a different domain. They're alive in a different realm. They're alive in a different way that we cannot comprehend. We cannot see what is behind the wall. We cannot see what is behind the tree. How can we even think about a different world, a world of arwah, a world of souls, where things are different? And not only that, the icing on the cake that Allah SWT tells us in this ayah, that, uh, that they are not just alive with Allah, but yurzaqun. They are getting food over there. And that is why it is mentioned in another hadith, Rasulullah told us that the people, the, the ruh of the shaheed is like in a bird that is flying up in Jannah in the paradise, going over the nahar, going over the rivers, beautiful, and being fed food by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the shubhada, all the martyrs from different fields and different battles, they are all combined together, whether it is the shuhada of Badr, or the shuhada of Uhud, or the shuhada of Khandaq, or the shuhada of the much later battles that the Muslims may have fought in recent years and times. All shuhada are joined together, and they rejoice together. And if they were granted a wish, what they want, they say, Oh Allah, send us back again in dunya, not to accumulate the dunya, but to fight again in your path, Ya Allah, so that we can continue to do this noble act and good deed. Then Allah SWT tells us about how they are up in the heavens with Allah SWT. So the next ayah Allah says, فَرِحِينَ بِمَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Verse number 170. فَرِحِين means farah. Farah literally means to be happy, to rejoice. And so, meaning they are happy over there, they're not sad, but they're really, really happy with what Allah SWT has blessed them with. From the fuzzle of Allah, from the blessing and bounty of Allah. 
وَيَسْتَبْشِرُونَ بِالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ And they are also happy with their people who they left behind. Because remember, in a battle, both people are fighting. Both meaning the one who is Shaheed and the one who is Ghazi. Ghazi is the one who did not die or perish in the battle, but rather return victoriously back to the city, back to the town. And those who perish in the field, they are also being happy for their their fellow comrades, fellow colleagues, uh, who did not join them as Shaheed, they're happy for them that uh, they are, you know, still survival and they have one more chance to fight again in the path of Allah. Remember, the Shaheed has no more chance to come back to the dunya and fight. But the Ghazi, the person who did not die Shaheed, but went to the battle and came back alive, that person has another chance in dunya to participate in another battle somewhere down the road and again fight in the path of Allah. So that is what they are being happy of him. Uh, and then they say, that there is no, uh, there is no uh, fear upon them and there's no grief upon them. Uh, they are not fearing or grieving anyone because they are happy that they have won the battle and they're coming back home. Verse number 171, Allah SWT says that they are giving, they are getting the good news. Yastabshiruna uh, bina'ma, bushra or yastabshir, abshir means to, to get the good news, to get the beneficial news. Bina'ma min Allah, they are giving the good glad tidings of the blessing of Allah SWT. And that is why, wafad uh, and the and the bounty of Allah, one Allah la ajal mu'mineen, and Allah does not waste the efforts of the believers, whatever effort they have done, in whatever capacity. So uh, these three ayats, 169, 170, 171, paint us a very beautiful picture that even though we are sad and we are crying, we the alive people, we are crying on the people who become martyrs. The martyr's body is lying there in a pool of blood and we are really, really sad. But Allah SWT is saying, do not be sad for they are in a much better abode, in a much better place. Number one, don't even call them amwat. Don't, it is an insult and disrespect to the shaheed to say that they have died. That is why there's a special title for them, a special maqam for them. Shaheed, Shuhada. And you know, Rasulullah used to encourage us to make dua that, that we make dua for Shahada. You know, one of the best way to make dua is Allahumma zukni mawta shahada. Oh Allah, give us the blessing of the death of Shahada. How that Shahada will come, only Allah knows. But if we have a desire, if we sleep every night desiring Shahada, uh, I know we live in very tough times now that even just using the word shahada has become controversial. But remember, like I said in the beginning of my uh, class here tonight, that uh, the sanctity of life is very precious, very valuable to Allah. So taking your own life is forbidden. That's why committing suicide is haram. But giving this life, because this life is so valuable, so precious, and because Allah has made this life so valuable and in sanctity that Allah has not allowed anyone to take the life of anyone else except if it is in form of a qisas in dia, the punishment of the law of Allah revealed. Other than that, nobody has, has the authority to take life. So therefore, when Allah is asking for the believers to present their life in the path of Allah, he is coming back and giving them in return a humongous reward, not just the reward of Jannah, but also a reward of a different domain. From the day the Shaheed has become Shaheed on earth, from that day until Qiyamah, this Shaheed is alive. From that day until the day of judgment, day of Qiyamah, this Shaheed is getting food, risk, your zakhum. And from that day of their shahada until the day of judgment, they are getting the good news. They're having the glad tidings and the good news from Allah. So Allah in these three ayat is saying that, look, if somebody gives up their life 
for their creator, for their master, for their Allah, then Allah also rewards them humongously. This is a very important concept to understand, my dear brothers and sisters. Why? Because from Dawah perspective, the non-Muslims purposely, deliberately use this issue to defame Islam, to malign and tarnish us Muslims. That, oh, look, you Muslims are bloodthirsty, blood savvy people. Oh, look, you Muslims love to give your life and you want to be, you know, martyr and all that. No, 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 no. We are not here to just loving to give life or take life. We are here giving life to the creator who gave us the life in the first place. The one who gave us life. I always say this, that please go and search on Google the terminology, the word in English, stillbirth. S-T-I-L-L-B-I-R-T-H, stillbirth. UNICEF has a classification for it. Stillbirth is given as a term to that baby that is born dead. After nine months of whole pregnancy, the child comes in this world, but it's dead on the first day. Meaning the day of birth and the day of death for the child is same. Me and you could have been that. The fact that we are alive, the fact that we got this life is a testimony and proof of the rahmah and mercy of Allah that he is so merciful he did not choose us to be a stillbirth he did not choose for us to be dead the day we are born from our parents and the fact that he has given us this gift of life is his biggest gift for humanity and therefore Allah is not vindictive Allah does not have vengeance he doesn't want this life for some very petty useless you know, illogical issues. He says the only reason you would give up your life is for the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah to be there. In other words, to correct the belief and concept of the non-Muslims or the enemies of Islam who say that you people love death more than life. It is not because we love killing and murder and and, and, and bloodshed on earth, it is because we love our creator, we love our master, Allah, the one who gave us this life. And when he demands us from this life to safeguard and protect the very word by which he sent his messenger and prophet on earth, then yes, we mince no words and we shine not away from giving of our life, not for some worldly desires, not so, not for gold or jewelry or money, not for some petty issues, but we give our life for the one who gave us life in the first place. And that is why this concept is very important. This is a very difficult concept to explain. These ayahs are very challenging. It's not easy in this time and age, and especially in the Western world, to explain how these verses of Surah Al Imran are not encouraging people to promote bloodshed and rivalry and fighting and killing and all that, but rather these verses are te teaching humanity a lesson, whether you're Muslim or non Muslim, that look, life is precious in itself. And if you have to give life, you have to only give it for one reason. And that one reason is the creator, the master, the khalif, the rab, Allah. When he demands you of that, even then Allah is not saying that everybody who goes out to defend his kalima, his la ilaha illallah, that everybody will die. Many come back alive. Yep, but yes, those who perish, they are not to be called as dead. They are not to be called as God, rather they are to be called as shaheed, as a martyr who is alive and being fed risk by Allah and who is being given news, good news by Allah and are in a different realm. Let's move to the next verse, verse number 172. Allah says, Allah <laughs> This ayah refers to the Ghazwa, the battle that is known as the uh, uh, battle of, uh, uh, let me see, Hamr al-Asad, yes. The battle of Hamr al-Asad, that was the battle after Uhud. What happened was that the Muslims, after Uhud, uh, they were returning back to Medina along with, their, along with their injured people, and news came to them that Abu Sufyan, you know, uh, wants to return and have a you know ambush and a surprise attack on the muslims so rasulullah instead of going back to medina he re he aborted that and reshifted uh, the army to go towards hamr al-asad it's about six to eight miles outside that area 
uh, of Medina. So imagine you're coming backwards and then suddenly you get the news and you turn right around. So Allah SWT reveals this ayah that, you know, kudos and glad tidings and good news to the people who answered the call of the Allah and their messenger. When Rasul said, who is coming with me to Hamr al-Asad, to that area to fight and to finish off any more further aggression from the Meccans and the, and the people, then the Sahaba said, we are with you and we will come. And that is why Allah says, الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَرَسُولِ those who answered the call of Allah and the call of Messenger, which here refers to the battle of Hamr al-Asad, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا أَصَابَهُمْ They answered the call of Allah and His Messenger after what was afflicted to them, al-Qarh. Qarh means literally injury, hurt or harm, which was the injury or hurt or harm referring to Uhud. As you know, in Uhud, the Muslims took a hit. The Muslims had to regroup themselves in the battle and then again, Finally, it ended in the victory for Muslims, but in the middle they took a big beating. Uh, many of these, many of these Sahaba were shaheed also, and a lot of them were injured. So Allah is referred to them. Basically, Allah is referred to them in a praiseworthy manner. That look, that they are, uh, you know, worthy and praiseworthy in the sense that they were injured, but they came back to, you know. Um, uh, to, to be ready again for any kind of demand from the deen for that. Then the next verse, Allah says, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسِ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ That Allah SWT is saying that people, you know, the munafiqeen, they always wanted to discourage the Muslims from fighting. They wanted to, you know, deviate them. So Allah is referring to that, that الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسِ إِنَّ النَّاسِ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ فَخْشَوْهُمْ that, you know, people have gathered to fight you, so you should fear them, you know, why are you going back, you know, to fight again? Let's just go back to Medina and, you know, call it a day, end it. But Allah says, فَزَادَهُمْ imana. But the people who are ready with the Prophet Sallam, ever ready to do anything for his sake, their iman was increased. فَزَادَهُمْ imana. This is similar to ayah num uh, number three in Surah Anfal. Allah SWT over there tells us about the qualities of mu'mineen, the qualities of believers, the features of believers. And one of the qualities and features of the believers that Allah mentions over there in Surah Anfal is similar to what we hear. Well, there Allah SWT says, وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلِيمْ آيَاتُهُ ذَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا When Allah's signs are revealed upon the believers, the believer's iman is increased. Same thing the word is here used. فَزَادَهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنَعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ Meaning their iman increased, that we are with the Prophet ﷺ, we are supporting him, we are steadfast, and their iman increased. And then they said, حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنَعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ That Allah is sufficient for us, and Allah is the best to be relying upon. Wakil, tawakkil, we rely and depend upon Allah. Allah is the one who is our caretaker and he is the best caretaker. He will never desert us. He will never let us go high and dry and, be, and, and go away, but he will always take care of us. Over here, we want to mention uh, two of the hadiths of Rasul uh, regarding this dua uh, that is there uh, about this dua, Hasbun Allah, name of Wakil. In one of the hadiths, Rasul uh, whenever something become very difficult upon him, and ishtad al amr, amr al azim, you know what he said to the Sahabi is that whenever you have something very humongous and huge, recite these beautiful words as a dua: Hasbi Allah. If you're alone, single, you would say Hasbi Allah wa Nima al Wakil. If you are in a jama'ah together as a group, like here in this ayah you would say hasbun Allah, the sighatul jam, plural. So you, this is a dua that we should be reciting or every day, all the time, in any difficulty, like somebody lose a job, somebody lose a house, somebody lose a car, somebody lose a loved one, somebody lost something, or somebody is in depression, somebody is in a extreme stress. This is a dua that Rasulullah said to recite. In fact, there's another hadith of Rasulullah uh, where Aisha Siddiq Ritana, she narrated that Rasulullah, whenever something would become very huge and difficult upon him, he would uh, bring, he'll bring his palms like this and blow in it with this dua. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. 
blow and then he would wipe his hair and wipe his lahya. The word is sha'ru wa lahya. His hair and his beard, he will, he will wipe over it. Meaning Aisha Siddiq, that's what she's saying. I saw Rasulullah doing this whenever something becomes stressful for him. You know, amrun, ishtad al amru azim, that something becomes very huge on him. So relieve the stress, to relieve the uh, severity of that, he would recite this dua. And sometime after reciting the dua, he would also blow in his hand and wipe it on his hair and head and beard. I say to you, my dear brother and sister Islam, right now we are in a pandemic. Right now we are with this COVID-19. Isn't this a huge thing for us? Aren't we all bogged down, isolated, and in this uh, you know, lockdown and whatnot? This is huge. Right now we should be reciting this dua. The same words that are in verse number 173 in Surah Al-Imran. Memorize this. It's very easy, very simple. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me and he's the best to rely upon. So in this time of pandemic, in this virus, in this flu, in this plague, in disease, Allah is sufficient for me and he is the best to rely on. Inshallah, I have full trust in Allah. I have tawakkul in Allah and he will remove this, remove this inshallah before Ramadan. So we return back to our masajid. I know many imams are spreading pessimism or spreading you know, negativity. But I am of the people who are always optimistic. I am of the people who follow the hadith of Rasulullah. He said that in order, in order to break negativity, say a good word, kalima tayyiba. And the kalima tayyiba is that always give people hope, always raise their ranks. Instead of saying, oh, what kind of Ramadan is going to be, or this Ramadan is going to be, or that Ramadan, let us come and ask and encourage people that everybody kneel down, walk down to the down to the ground and ask Allah and beg Allah. Allah is ghanin, Allah is rich. He will not desert us. He will not, you know, return our, our dua back. If, if all the Muslims just make one together collective dua and beg Allah and beseech to Allah and cry to Allah, that, oh Allah, our hearts long for the masajid, which have become closed upon us. Oh Allah, we don't want to experience a Ramadan without taraweeh in your house in Baytullah, then I have full tawakkul on Allah that before Ramadan comes, suddenly drastic changes will come in the environment. Suddenly things will change because Allah is saying about his shaheed that he is giving him risk and he has so many beautiful things. So what about us? Who are on earth, will Allah leave us alone high and dry? No, if we make dua, we make tawbah and istighfar, and we recite this dua especially, as Aisha Siddiq Radana told us, that Rasulullah used to recite this increasingly at a time when things will be very tough on him, and there's no doubt in my mind that we are going through one of the most toughest times in our lifetime. You know, even our parents' generation did not see what we're facing right now. So this ayah and this stuff see it comes at a very, very pertinent time. Coincidentally, it comes at a time when we are locked down, when we are isolated. And it is at this time that we need to follow the Sunnah Rasulullah and increase our dua with this word hasbi allah wa ni'mal makil if we recite this 100 times in the morning after fajr 100 times in the evening after asr 100 times before you go to bed at night after isha just recite hasbi allah wa ni'mal wakil hasbi allah wa ni'mal wakil hasbi allah wa ni'mal wakil and you know why this dua is very very blessed my dear brother and sister islam it is because this is the same dua that sayyidna ibrahim al islam recited when he was going in the fire as mentioned by Rasul Sallam, that when Ibrahim al -Islam was thrown in the fire in the projectile motion, and Jibreel al -Islam came to him and said, oh, ya Ibrahim, is there anything for me? You want to order something? And Ibrahim al -Islam, looking at Jibreel said, Amma anta fala. from you, no, I don't want anything. And Allah knows my hal, Allah knows my condition. I ask only from Allah, and he recited, Ibrahim al-Islam recited the same words, Hasbi Allahu wa Naim al -wakil. These words are so soothing, so touching. Your heart tranquilizes, much better than any vaccine. And for all of our brothers and sisters who are listening, that please make sure you make, from tonight that you learn about this dua, or if you knew from before, from tonight, start making wirt, start making zikr of this dua a hundred times on your tasbih, on your finger. Has be Allah wa name al wakil. Has be Allah name al wakil. The same beautiful words Ibrahim al Islam said as he was going into the fire. So Allah decreed to the fire before Ibrahim al Islam landed in the fire. Allah gave order to the fire. 
قلنا يا نار كوني بردا وسلاما على إبراهيم و fire become cool and peaceful upon our slave Ibrahim عليه السلام. so the next verse verse number one seventy four الله سبحانه وتعالى يقول فان قال ابو بنعمه من الله وفضل لم يمسسهم سوء واتبوا رضوان الله والله ذو فضل عظيم so they returned the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no harm had touched them meaning as they came back to fight with Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they came onto the name of Allah and they and they got the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the pleasure of Allah ridwan Allah ridwan means the pleasure and the acceptability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah is the one who gives the fadl and he is the one who has the greatest bounty and blessing to give to people and the worst last verse verse number 175 we scroll up inshallah innama dhalikum shaitan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this passage this portion of the passage saying that remember satan is your enemy and his job is always to instill fear in you instill negative into you instill pessimism in you like allah says in surah bakr also in, uh, in that area of 255 allah says shaitan threatens you with poverty and he orders you to do profanity and immorality and vulgarity here Allah says, "Innama dhalikum al-shaytan," meaning those people who were not wanting to go to the battle of Hamra Asad and they wanted to go back, they are the ones who were getting influenced by the fear and scare tactics of shaytan. "Fala taqafuhum wa qafuni," so do not fear, you know, Satan. Allah is openly saying in this ayah, "Don't you ever dare fear, uh, you know, fear and be scared from Satan, shaytan, because that's what his job is. What is the job of iblis?" The job of Iblis, as you know, the word Iblis comes from Ablasa. Ablasa in Arabic linguistically means to frustrate someone, to make them so negative, so pessimistic negativity that they become frustrated. And like now, it just it just really, really disheartens me when I see Muslims, even Imams, sometimes promoting pessimism and saying, oh no, we're not going to be praying Ramadan, uh, Taraweeh, Ramadan in the masjid. Oh no, what's going to happen? Oh, the world's going to end. Brothers and sisters, come on, give me a break. We still have 24 days, 23 days. That's a long time. Allah listens to dua in one night, in one day. We have 23 consecutive days to make dua to Allah, to beg Allah, to cry to Allah, to beseech Allah. And we have full tawakkal in Allah that Allah will listen before 23rd April. Inshallah, that we return. And if he doesn't, then qadr Allah ma'asha qadr. At least we tried. At least we were hopeful. At least we were positive. And yes, if Allah decreed something that is with him, but let us not uh, promote scare and fear tactics and negativity because then we might fall into the category of shaitan i know some people say let us be realistic the authorities are saying the doctors are saying look the whole world can see anything they want but the love of a slave of allah and the allah is different it knows no boundaries between these things and so inshallah come my dear one sister islam let us make dua from tonight and every night that that we ask Allah and beg Allah that oh Allah return us back to the masajid oh Allah we want to pray taraweeh in your masajid oh Allah do not deprive us from praying the taraweeh in the masajid oh Allah do not deprive us from having iftar and salah in the masjid oh Allah make us taste the Ramadan as you did every single Ramadan inshallah the first question um, on the topic of um, the, the word Shaheed, meaning martyr, and the word shahada, meaning testimony of faith. Can you elaborate a little bit on the relationship between the martyr and the testimony of faith? Um, the person who is the martyr, the shaheed, is giving the testimony of faith that he or she lived their whole life on that pretext of there is no God but Allah. So the word shahada literally means to witness. So you witness the shahada all throughout your life. You always give testimony to that oneness of God, oneness of Allah and that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. And giving it a practical meaning comes when a person gives their life also in that path. Of, and that's why they're known as shahada. Jazakallah khair.
Yeah, where exactly are the martyrs today? Uh, are they in their graves? Um, are they in Jannah? Uh, and what exactly does it mean that they are with Allah? Where are they with Allah? Yeah, this uh, concept of farahina and Allah, you know, the andi of Allah, the being with Allah, it is uh, a concept of being close to Allah SWT. So it could be Jannah, it could be a special place. It, uh, the body is still on earth. It is their soul that is there up in the heavens with Allah SWT. But the body of the martyr is still here on the ground as we bury the person in the grave. And so therefore, uh, that person uh, is in a different realm. The, this is the life of Barzakh, which no one knows their details except Allah SWT. Life of Barzakh means the life of the grave. You know, even those people who are buried in the grave, uh, those who die on a natural death, their souls are reunited there in the grave. They face and sense and feel and experience a different, different kind of realm, which is... Uh, cannot be explained so easily. But here in this context, the verse is very clear that their soul is with Allah SWT. Like I said earlier also in my uh, uh, explanation, the hadith of Rasul where he said that the souls of the shaheed are like a bird. You know, their souls are like in a bird and they're flying in paradise in Jannah and they go over the many different rivers and har also there. Jazakallah. With respect to the category of martyr that um, um, that we talked about today on the battlefield, um, there are other types of martyrs, um, like those who die in the plague or those who die of an abdominal disease, like like cancer. Uh, how does their status compare to the martyr that dies on the battlefield? Is there any difference? Well, there are many categories of shahada. There are at least seven mentioned in the ahadith, like you also hinted towards it, some of them. You know, drowning in the water, also burning in fire. There are many ways, sickness and disease. But of course, these levels or maratib of shahada are different and nowhere compared to the highest level. The highest level of shahada, martyrdom or shaheed, is one who gives their life in the battlefield, who gives their blood and their body and flesh in the path. So their level is the highest level. Underneath them will be the other levels that would come. Is there a hierarchy? We don't know. The Rasulullah just mentioned all these seven categories, but at the same time, the highest level and category is the one who uh, dies in the battlefield uh, because they have persevered the most uh, in terms of the hardship of giving their life for the sake of la ilaha illallah. Jazakallah. Um, the next question, is the um, COVID-19 disease considered like a plague and Muslims who die of COVID-19, are they considered like this category of martyr? Yes, of course, that's mentioned in the Hadith of Salam, that anybody who dies due to a plague dies a martyr, Shaheed. So. Uh, this, you know, this is a plague, this is a disease, it is spread throughout the world, people are suffering in all nook and corner, so whoever passes due to this, inshallah, inshallah. I mean, nobody knows uh, for sure, only Allah knows the best, but yes, according to the guidelines given to us by the Prophet in mean, the Hadith, we anticipate that they would die as a shaheed. Can a shaheed do intercession for his family and children on the Day of Judgment? Yes, he can do that. Those who die from a plague, um, those who initially would have gone to Jannah, would they be considered martyrs or say it's someone who's not as practicing what happens to them? Allah knows best. Allah will uh, evaluate them on, uh, on their characteristics, whatever they've done. You know, people could be living a whole life of disobedience to Allah. They may then die as a shaheed because of a plague or something. Their affairs will be decided by Allah. So we cannot say for sure 
what's going to happen to them, where they're going you know, after the Day of Judgment. Okay. And inshallah, maybe just to conclude, um, can you say a few words about how the current COVID-19 pandemic could change our relationship with Allah. You've already talked about the importance of this very special dua today. Can you leave us with perhaps two or three other tips that we should be implementing every day in our life uh, during this period? Yes, uh, inshallah, um, these calamities and these afflictions you know, this uh, collateral damage that is happening to the world. These are usually wake up calls from Allah SWT. Um, remember, bala calamities, they come uh, in two concepts. Rasulullah said, is a Allahu abdan ibtalahu. Rasulullah is saying in this short hadith that if Allah loves any human being, then he tests them. So tests can be a form of a means of and form of getting closer to Allah SWT, or tests can be a means a form of getting further away from Allah SWT. So there are always two types of people whenever there is a test coming from Allah. And no doubt that this COVID-19 coronavirus, this waba, this bala, it's a bala, it's a test from Allah SWT. Many people will come out much more stronger after this. This is my firm belief and conviction. And many people will become very far away from Allah because those who rebel against Allah, those who cannot, uh, who just have a nervous breakdown, who just break down and say, you know, you know, enough is enough, it's too much. You know, why is God testing us so much? Why are so many people dying so many, you know, suffering? So there are people who go antagonistic. They become anti-Allah or anti religion as per se or anti-spirituality because they just cannot bear that anymore and they become rebellious whereas those who were loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they see this as an opportunity they start istighfar and toba more and more because these calamities they come as a reminder a wake-up call that we need to mend our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so one of the most important things that we need to do right now is tawbah. And second most important thing is istighfar. And the third most important thing, these are the top three things that every mu'min believer should be doing right now. And the third one is du'a, kathratu du'a. You know, we should not underestimate the power of du'a. Du'a, Rasulullah said in a very authentic, beautiful hadith, a du'a silahul mu'min. Dua is the weapon of a believer. And this hadith is very meaningful right now. Right now, we have no weapon against COVID-19. There's no medicine. There is no vaccine. There is no doctor. There's no nurse. There's no hospital. There is nothing in medical science that can save humanity from COVID-19, except what, except what the believers have, dua. The kathrat of dua. We should have dua in faradi, individual dua. We should have dua istimai, collective dua. We as a family at home, each family in their house should be making dua. The father and the mother and the son and daughter, you know, together make dua uh, evening time, morning time, anytime. Then each person, the father, mother, son and daughter, each person individually making dua, making special sessions and sittings of just making dua. You know, and when we make dua, sometimes we're very selfish in the sense that we make dua very quickly, very hurriedly, very rushing, you know, just five, 10 minutes and done. And we believe that, okay, five, 10 minutes, I make dua, now Allah is gonna remove COVID-19. The Sahaba would make dua to Allah for hours and hours. Some would even make dua so long that in their crying, they would then faint, faint and drop on the ground with the power of dua. And that is why the 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 influence the impact of the dua of the sahaba was such metaphorically speaking it would move the mountains literally if the sahaba made dua to move the mountains allah would move the mountains such was the power of the dua of the sahaba and where is our dua today we can't even move a small stone forget about the mountain that is how weak our dua is because dua needs ingredient dua needs strategy Dua needs tip. 
do I need vitamin? Do I need substance? The words, the word choices, the feeling, the sensitivity. You know, there's a whole science behind dua. And if you anybody wants to learn more, you can go on my Facebook page or you can go to our uh, uh, our Masjid Islamic Society of uh, North Jersey page. I recently, just tonight, I concluded after 12 different sessions. For the last 12 days, we've been talking about the power of dua. Anybody can go to that uh, our Masjid YouTube channel or our Masjid Facebook page and see those. In each of those 30 minute, there are 30 minute episodes I did for 12 months, for 12 days. And this is what I was going to leave tonight with all of you who are listening tonight, is that let us learn how to make dua. Let us learn how to do. We learn to do everything. We learn how to drive and get a license. We learn how to function a computer and get mastery on that. We learn how to cook and get mastery on that. We learn how to do that. Let us learn how to make dua. Let us learn how to beseech Allah. Let us learn how to feel the intimate connection with Allah in dua that Allah then says, you know, this is it. Let me give this person right now. There is no delay in that. Why is there a delay in our dua? It's something to think about. You know, right now there are thousands and thousands of people, Muslims, making dua that, oh Allah, remove COVID-19. Oh Allah, get us rid of this. But every day it's increasing. Every day the virus is increasing. Maybe there is something missing in our dua. Maybe there is an ingredient that is missing. Maybe there is an effectivity. You know, medicine, if you take medicine, sometimes it doesn't have efficacy, you know, because maybe the medicine is, uh, you know, um, what you call that uh, counterfeit medicine. It's not original. So obviously it's going to have no effect. Or maybe the medicine is expired. You eat any expired medicine, it's not going to have any effect in you. And you're just putting in pills and pills. Same thing with dua. For dua's efficacy, for dua's power, for dua's impact, for dua's influence, it has to have the right ingredients, the right steps, the right style, the right ways to do it, and the right words and the right choices. So that Allah SWT says, look, look, O oh angels, look, my slave, my abd is so desperate. They want this. What are they asking? And the angels say, oh Allah, they are asking, they are begging you for forgiveness, for maghfirah. So Allah says, I give them maghfirah. What else are they asking? Oh Allah, they're asking that you remove this COVID-19. All oh, Allah says, just one word, kun, fayakun. Kun fayakun and all the doctors are surprised. Kun fayakun and all the hospitals are surprised. Kun fayakun and all the biogenetic technology surprise who have been doing research on this small invisible virus. And they say, wait a second, what happened? 24 hours, the whole world changed. What happened? And then they can say, yes, the Muslims have been praying. Right now, I think we have a great opportunity as Muslims to be at the forefront, to be the torch bearers, to be the trendsetters and show humanity that this is the time to beg Allah. This is the time to call upon the Lord. This is the time to bring humanity to remember that increase your ta'alluq from Allah. And the only reason dua will be accepted, how strong a connection I have with Allah. The more closer I am to Allah, the more likelihood and chances of my dua to be accepted. The more further away I am from Allah, the less likelihood and the less chances of our dua to be accepted. So I leave everybody tonight with this, that from tonight, increase the dua. Increase the flavor of dua, increase the efficacy of dua, find out, learn. There are so many, you know, self to do things, so many videos on YouTube. I mean, the, the, the whole world is full of knowledge. It is just that we have to put two and two together and understand how can I improve my dua? How can I improve the efficacy and the effectiveness of my dua so that this bala, this calamity, this affliction just goes away? Right now, my only uh, request to everyone that I meet, wherever I see, well, meet through online, we are not come meet physically, is that we just need to increase dua. My only main focus and mission is that 24th April is a deadline for us. We are fighting a battle against COVID-19 by 24th April, not for selfish reasons, but for the sake of loving Allah and connecting with Allah. Yes, we can find Allah in our houses. Yes, we can find Allah 
in our rooms and bedrooms. But the beauty and the taste and the sweetness of knowing and finding Allah in his house, in masjid, is far bigger than any other places. And for and, and I end with this hadith of Rasulullah where he said that seven people will be under the shade of Allah's arsh on Yom al qiyamah Seven categories, seven types of people will be under the shade when there'll be no shade except Allah's throne. One of those categories of seven people, you know who they are, my dear brother, is Rasulullah said that uh, a person a person whose heart is suspended in the masjid. I just cannot realize right now how those people must be feeling whose hearts throughout their life, throughout their daily life, you know, 365 days a year, their heart was always suspended in the masjid. How is their heart feeling right now since last two, three weeks when the masjid are closed? Those people must be crying profusely, you know, wetting their beards, wetting their shirts and, you know, their carpets and their, you know, janamas uh, or the prayer rug. They must be wetting that so, so profoundly, profusely because they all, in normal circumstances, their heart was always in the masjid. And now they are no longer able to go to masjid. Forget about the people who never went to the masjid. We're talking about those people who have qualified to be under the shade of Allah because their quality is that their hearts is suspended, is attached, is connected in the masjid. And right now the masjid is closed. So those people need to make the most of the dua right now to ask Allah SWT that, oh Allah, remove this calamity so we may return to your houses, O oh Allah, and rejoice and refresh with the Iman and Noor, because no one can remove this except Allah SWT. And all he has to say is just one word, Kun, and it becomes. May Allah forgive our sins, may Allah forgive our shortcomings, may Allah accept this session that we just did right now uh, for the sake of Allah SWT. May Allah SWT help us understand all that we listened, and may Allah SWT help us apply every single thing that we understood after listening to it. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والأسر إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العظيم السلام عليكم عليكم السلام الله أكبر